Howdy friends! Today we're talking through some basic tips on how to spend less on groceries, how to shop less for groceries, and how to have more fun in the kitchen. Let's go! So, I didn't really start cooking until recently, and let me tell you, it is just a, a whole new ball game. Learning how to shop effectively. How do I choose meals to make? What should I put on my shopping list? Wait, what do I even eat? Does my husband count as three servings or one? Add in the hashtag economy and the higher than usual prices at the store, and we've got ourselves a fun little challenge we didn't ask for. But the good news is, cooking is a skill, which means it's something we can grow in and improve on. So, here are five tips that some of us here at YNAB have learned to cook our very best on a budget. First things first, stock up on your pantry essentials. One of the most expensive aspects of grocery shopping is that half of what you buy will be literally molding and expired like five days from the point of sale. This can lead to one of our biggest wastes of grocery money. Now, I'm not saying we don't eat produce and we don't eat meat, because those are hugely important to our health and our nourishment, but I am saying there are plenty of foods that can get us by in a pinch that can live in the pantry for months before they even think about turning bad. A well-stocked pantry can save your wallet and your time from those last-minute grocery trips, you know, the ones where you go to buy a bag of flour and come back with like $60 worth of groceries? Here are some essentials that we found are super helpful to keep on hand. All kinds of pastas, lentils, and rice because these can be the base of so many meals. If you're looking for some cheaper, shelf-stable protein, tuna is a great one to have on hand. Canned items can make for a super easy meal, like a canned soup, or a really quick and easy side, like corn, green beans, all kinds of canned fruits. Oatmeal and peanut butter make for a quick and affordable breakfast, and cereals, but tip on the cereals, always go store brand. Because it's like a third of the price, and they still have marshmallows in them. Salsa, spaghetti sauce, marinara sauce, alfredo sauce, pesto. Pair any of those up with noodles and a canned side and you have dinner in, in three minutes. And I always like to have a cake mix or a brownie mix just because you never know when guests will come by, except please text before you come. And if you never know what you actually have in your pantry, I have a tip for you. Consider joining our 30-day More Money Challenge, where the average participant saves $1,000 in one month's time following three simple rules. This challenge comes with a free printable workbook, and it has a whole fancy detailed pantry inventory that you are going to love. You can document everything in your pantry, when it will expire by, how many you have of each, and it helps you make your next shopping list, which I almost never know how to begin doing. I will put the link to the 30-day more money challenge down below so you can get your free printable pantry inventory. Second tip is to buy in bulk or in normal and freeze. My husband and I were hanging out with some friends at a potluck the other day and they told us that they got all their food at Costco and we were like, oh, but not produce, right? And they were like, yeah, produce. And we were like, okay, so we're supposed to act like it's normal that you buy 18 pounds of corn at once? And they said, no, we buy all of our produce at once at Costco. We put on a movie while we chop it all up and we stick it in the freezer. Well, they take out a week's worth and put that in the fridge, but they stick the rest in the freezer. And I was like, yeah, I guess that makes sense, but what else can you put in the freezer? And then I started Googling this dark hole of what you can freeze that you didn't know you could freeze, and it's shocking. So in case you were wondering what you can freeze, here's a list. Most vegetables, obviously, especially if you blanch them first. Fruits, easy smoothies. You can freeze egg whites. What? Just separate the yolks. Chopped garlic, avocado cubes, easy guacamole later. You can freeze milk and half and half. What? People are freezing hummus. They freeze their bread. I knew that. My mom did that. But they also freeze their yogurt, tomato sauce. They freeze nuts. What? I honestly didn't know nuts went bad. And they also freeze their cheese, their sour cream, herbs, cooked rice, leftover pasta, and pre-made sandwiches. Okay, I just saw a video on Instagram, if you have kids, you'll love this, from an account called Home and Kind, and she makes all of her kids' school lunch sandwiches at the start of the month, and then puts them in the freezer. Yeah. And then every morning before they go to school, they just grab a sandwich out of the freezer and they go. I'll link the video down below, but it's like, Brilliant. Like, I don't know why that's so revolutionary to me, but I was like, this woman's doing it right. 
third tip is to just always keep easy go-to meals on hand. Not every meal needs to be a Michelin starred event. I don't know what Michelin stars are, so that helps. But there will be nights and many nights, dare I say, where you don't even feel like you have the energy to cook a frozen pizza. That is okay. So let's realistically anticipate that those nights will happen and stock our fridges or our freezers accordingly. Here are some lower effort, good enough options that will keep you from just running to a restaurant down the road or ordering takeout when energy is low and you just don't wanna cook. Pasta with some pre-made marinara sauce or Alfredo sauce and give your kids the job of toasting some frozen ravioli to throw on top. Just always have sandwich supplies. Bread, meat, cheese, a moistener, like mayonnaise or mustard. Sorry, I said moistener. Frozen stir fry mix. This one's great because it has a ton of vegetables and you don't feel as bad. <laughs> Aldi has tons of great frozen stir fry mix options, some including noodles, some including meat, some having it all. Breakfast burritos, microwaves, man. They're the best. Personally, we like to buy 10,000 frozen pizzas. Always have a frozen pizza on hand. And here's a weird tip. I've learned that I do tire of the thicker crust, like I just get sick of it after a while, but thin crust, I never get sick of. I don't know if that's just a me thing, but if you're like, whoa, we get burnt out on pizza really easily, just try doing some thin crust for a while. I don't know, worth checking out. If you have a little more effort, you can do breakfast skillets. Also, my mom taught me how to make my own eggs or omelet when I was in like probably fifth grade and I made myself eggs all the time. So there's a thought too, is to teach your kids easy meals to make so they can carry the load every once in a while when you are too tired to do so. It's a thing. And also, while we're talking about quick, easy meals, don't forget that dinner doesn't always have to look the way you think dinner should look. If life is too much and you wanna have a cereal for dinner night, your kids will worship you. They'll think it's the coolest thing. You think you're feeling like a bad, lazy parent, but no, they're gonna be like, they will literally tell their friends about it at school. Growing up in my house, Friday nights, we did popcorn and a movie. Do you know how much it costs to feed a family of seven popcorn for dinner? Like, 50 cents? All that to say, don't stress about dinner needing to look a certain way. In fact, you might even earn some brownie points if you switch it up and try something totally weird. Fourth, and this was the game changer for me, make cooking a good experience. Listen, if you hate cooking, you're, you're not gonna wanna do it. Yeah, you're gonna go to a restaurant. Yeah, you're gonna order takeout. You're never going to want to cook if it's not fun for you. And while it is totally okay if it is your priority to eat at restaurants, or do carry out, it can also put quite the dent in your budget if you are not financially preparing for that priority. So let's think what can we do to make cooking a more enjoyable experience, preferably one that we even look forward to. Personally, my first rule for cooking means that I get a glass of wine while I cook. I mean, I'm looking forward to cooking dinner all day. <laughs> Some other ideas for making cooking more fun, start simple. Google five ingredient recipes you're welcome. This is how I got started and it was a game changer because there is nothing more overwhelming than pulling up what sounds like a yummy recipe and finding out that you need 25 ingredients, 12 of which you don't have. Then you go to the grocery store and spend $40 to make one meal and you're like, yeah, why would you ever cook again if that's the experience you have every time? There is a whole world of people out there that are just as overwhelmed by cooking as you are and they made a safe space for us. Don't let their labors be wasted. If you hate cooking to your utter core, cook with someone else. Because now you're not just working in the kitchen, you're getting in quality time with someone you love and they can make it fun. And if there's no one around, turn it into a virtual date. It's a great time to catch up with mom or dad, your spouse, or your kid. Next tip, make sure to read the recipe all the way through before you start cooking it. Because you may find that you don't physically have what it takes to make the meal or that you don't mentally and emotionally have what it takes to make that meal. And in that case, just quit while you're ahead. Again, let's backtrack full circle, five ingredient recipes, Google it with me. Next tip, prep your ingredients before you start cooking. Because then you can look ahead to tomorrow's recipe and if it also calls for onions, you can chop 
chop tomorrow's onions then too. And you just made tomorrow that much easier with that much less tears. Turn on music or an audiobook while you cook or be like me, Love Island, The Bachelor, any dating show that doesn't seem feasibly sustainable. Important tip, give yourself plenty of time to make the meal. If you are rushed and stressed, yeah, you're gonna hate cooking. But also tip I've learned, let's say the recipe says it takes 30 minutes to make. <sighs> That's how long it takes the professional to make it. Am I a professional? No. If the recipe says it takes 30 minutes to make, I give myself 60 minutes to make it. Because also I'm an Enneagram one and I am way too thorough for my own good. I don't mind the longer cooking time, but I do mind being misled and having all my plans screwed up for the night. So I give myself that grace from the start and plan on a longer cooking time to begin with. Next. Good tip, always keep a running grocery list. Pin one to the fridge, keep it on your counter, or I have an app for my phone now. It's called Any List and it's awesome. As soon as you run out of something, make a habit to write it down. I know this about myself, if I don't write it down immediately, I will a thousand percent forget two seconds later. So if I pull the last sandwich bag out of the little cardboard box, I immediately go and write it down. Because there's nothing worse than thinking you have two tablespoons of olive oil and you have no tablespoons of olive oil. And as you settle into your rhythm of cooking, you'll realize what you tend to use and what you need on hand. That way you'll have more and more of the right ingredients on hand when you actually need them. Next tip, try meal planning. And before you reject this tip, just try it for a month. We always feel like meal planning is so daunting, but there are plenty of people out there in this good, good world that have decided to carry our burdens for us and make this easier for us. My latest discovery was actually a recommendation from a YNABber in the comments on one of these videos. And it has changed my life. There's a blogger out there. Her name is Mashup Mom. And every week she makes a six dinner meal plan that is based out of Aldi's weekly sale ad. So not only are the ingredients on sale, not only are the recipes already picked for you, but she even gives you the shopping list. Oh my gosh, this has solved like 12 of my problems. Literally, I don't even look at the recipes before I go to the store. I just pull up the grocery list on my phone. I buy everything on sale in one store and then every night it's just a surprise. What are we making today? And it's been awesome. I've also learned how to cook tons of new things that I've never cooked before. My life has changed. So if you are not super gung-ho on the idea of meal planning, go find someone else that's already meal planned on your behalf. I really believe that once you figure out how to work with your pantry staples and enjoy the experience of cooking, your grocery bill is going to dwindle and dwindle because you are going to be loads more efficient in the kitchen. And lastly, number five, keep cheap, easy recipes on rotation. Cooking at home does not mean you need to be rotating through 30 different recipes a month. Spice up your rotation with budget-friendly recipes you know the family will enjoy and keep the crowd pleasers on repeat as often as you want. If it's cheap and easy and the family loves it, no reason you can't have it once or twice a week. We've got some ideas to get you started. I'll describe them, but there will be more details in a blog that I will link down below. Make baked potatoes and just dump a chunky canned soup or canned chili on top of it. Bonus if you add cheese. Roast some sweet potatoes with shredded chicken and toss in your favorite sauteed veggie. Make pasta, but top it with unique ingredients like capers, artichoke hearts, sun-dried tomatoes. Basically take something basic and make it bougie. Make some easy peanut sauce, mix it in with stir-fry noodles, veggies, and chop it with some fresh diced green onion. Make ready-to-go slow cooker meals. Chop up all the ingredients on a Sunday afternoon, throw them in a gallon-sized Ziploc bag, toss them in the freezer, and pull out one bag before you go to work, dump it in the slow cooker, and when you get home, You've got yourself a full cooked, ready meal, dinner, yes, amen. Meals will be literally the easiest they've ever been. Imagine getting home from work and, and your house made dinner for you. That's what these are like. Also, find ways to substitute expensive ingredients with cheaper ingredients. Use less meat in your burgers and sloppy joes by adding beans to your meat. Honestly, I could go on and on, but I already feel like we've been here all day, even though it's been like, 
14 minutes. The takeaway, do what you can to make cooking fun so that you have the ability within yourself to say no to takeout. Go easy on the budget by having a game plan for what's needed before you hit the grocery store. And learn what affordable ingredients are your favorite so you can really lean into them and stretch the budget to make your grocery money go further. And remember, you can lean into cooking as hard as you want, making it your creative outlet, knowing how much money it's saving you, or it can be as simple as cereal for dinner. Give yourself permission to go whichever route you need each day. Times are evolving, our circumstances are always changing, and putting your best foot forward every day is the best we can do. And don't forget to join our 30-day more money challenge, not only to get your slick pantry inventory, but to see how you could save yourself an extra thousand dollars in one month. The link will be down below, as well as the link to your brand new free 34-day trial to the award-winning budgeting app, You Need a Budget. We can't wait to see you there. Thanks for watching. One of my favorite things is to always have olive oil and garlic on hand because you can add those to anything to spruce it up and it makes you feel like a wizard. Because you can take any meal and make it fancy with garlic in my head. Because garlic is the epitome of fine dining to me. You don't physically have what it takes to make the meal or you don't mentally. <laughs> That's, yeah.